Hi, it's Kerwin here, and I'm here today to show you just a little tutorial about how I get my portraits drawn up, um, which is the first step of my paintings. Um, the aim of this is to just to show you a little bit more behind the scenes, introduce myself a little bit more, and uh, maybe even um, show you a trick or two you might not know. So I hope you enjoy. All of my portraits are totally hand drawn, and to help with this process, I use a method in which I have grid lines on the canvas and the same corresponding grid lines on the picture that I'm drawing from here on my laptop and it's just a case of following the detail around the picture and transferring the different lines to come up with the stencil portrait image. Now there's not much equipment you'll need for this, you will need uh, a pencil or two of your choice, um, pencil sharpener and a rubber for the mistakes you are probably going to make at some point or another. Um, just a quick note on the pencil uh, selection. I use two in all of my drawings. I use one for the background for the grid lines. Um, I've actually got a B here today. It's nice and easy to rub out uh, without leaving any smudging or any permanent marks on the canvas so that once the final painting is finished you can't see the, the pencil through the, the paint at the end which is obviously very important. And for the actual drawing of the face I've got a 4H or I sometimes use an F which has minimal smudging when I'm actually drawing the image and, and rubbing things out. There are different grid lines you can choose from depending on um, the size of the surface you're drawing on and the level of detail you want to go to. You can use squares but I use triangles in a sort of diagonal crisscross type layout. And the way I start is to just draw two straight lines from corner to corner across the canvas and then go from there. So this first bit is a little bit fiddly because uh, the screen doesn't actually go across the whole um, diameter of the canvas. So I have to use the smaller one just at the end as well because if you don't get these first two lines as accurate as possible the rest of the lines will all be out slightly so just sometimes it'll take a bit of practice just to get this as accurate as possible So once you're confident just draw the lines across and then the other way So once you've gone from corner to corner, the next stage is to go down the middle each way and I would recommend using a tape measure just to make sure you do go down the middle of the canvas because like I say, the, the better, the more accurate you draw these, these grid lines, the better result you'll get at the end. So I would really recommend taking the time to get this bit right. And nine inches there. I'm using my standard 18 by 24 inch portrait canvas here. It's an ideal size for a face and uh, I just really like this, using this size now. And the good thing about this grid line technique is that it can be applied to canvases or surfaces of any type. So if you're drawing on a bit of paper this big or a canvas two meters wide, you can use the same approach and uh, we'll get the same good result. Now I've gone corner to corner and both ways, so the next step is just, just keep going through the corners, getting more and more triangles and diagonals there to just uh, help with the drawing. So I've now got four rectangles here, I've gone corner to corner, and now I'll just take two more lines down the canvas each way, going through the intersections. And this is why I said at the start that the two first lines we'll do are the most important because if those two are out then all of the other lines will just be wrong. So I've got my two extra lines each way and now I'm going to just carry on going diagonally through more corners. You can just check again that the diagonal line is going through all of the previous intersections. And now four going the other way. So that's all of the diagonal lines in place. The final step is just to do four more lines each way through all of the previous intersections and that'll be it for me. So there we have it, my grid lines are in place, 
and the final step is just to make sure you have the same corresponding grid lines on the image that you're drawing from, either on your computer or you can just draw them by hand over an image that you may have in front of you. Again, make sure you have the best, most accurate lines possible because that will mean the best drawing at the end. And the great thing about this technique is it is so simple to help you produce really good quality drawings at the end and it's accessible to just about anyone of any skill level if you just have good grid lines and get all the, each of the components and the lines in place as best as possible. I guarantee that will help you improve the accuracy and quality of your drawings. Now time to start my drawing here. And now these grid lines are in place, the, the final step really is to just, as you go, make sure that you um, judge and apportion the right amount of space between each two ends of each line, depending on which part you are on the canvas. Focusing as much as possible to get each of the lines in place is basically a grown up version of dot to dot. You're just going off the image here, look, taking one square at a time. I actually usually start in this bottom corner on something like a shoulder, nice and simple to get me warmed up before I go on to the main details of the face and the eyes, which are the most important part of any portrait drawing. Find a starting point of the line, match it up to the corresponding point on here, and then just take it from there. So on the shoulder, I can see that it starts just over two thirds between these two lines, so I'll make the point here. And I can see off the image on the computer, it intersects these two lines just about midway. Then I can just trace through these points and that's the start of the drawing. Most details of a face don't actually matter, so where a shoulder starts and ends and how high it is, as long as it's within a, a, a certain sort of range, it won't affect the overall quality of the drawing at the end. It's things like eyes, nose, mouth, the facial details, they're the really important ones. The really great thing about this technique of drawing is that it should help you limit your mistakes to just the little part of the drawing you're working in at the time. So this should make it much more easy to detect your mistakes, measure your accuracy as you go, um, so I really recommend it. Thanks for watching, I hope you've enjoyed it. Make sure to check out my website www.bykerwin.com. Head over to my Facebook page and check out my Instagram which is Kerwin Blackburn. And stay tuned for more.